So my name's Ren. I'm a uh, production engineer at Facebook that's not super important to the story. And I'm going to tell you a little story about, like, it's basically the story of my career. Like, I realized recently I uh, started a new job, and I actually realized that, like, there are a lot of people out there that are more amazing than they think. And, um, you know, I... So, anyway, sorry. Um, so this is kind of a personal story. There may be parts of it that are hard for me to tell. There are parts of it that are like kind of personal. But I want you all to know, like, kind of like, like, th like this is the story of my career, the ups and downs. And I know that there are people out there that have had similar experiences. Maybe not. Maybe some people have just been rock stars all the time, and I'm the only one. But, um, but anyway, let's get this started. So. Um, so before Silicon Valley, like when I got out of college, um, I worked at a very big hierarchical company. And I'm going to keep the companies here kind of anonymous to protect the guilty. But um, <coughs> um, I worked at a big hierarchical company, and, um, and I worked in what was like a knock position, like a third shift position. And you know, coming out of uh, college and things like that, I uh, was not super happy with that, and like I had been a nerd all my life, and like this was a computer job, but it wasn't like the computer job I had dreamed of, you know. So, um, so I left that company, and I actually I lived in Memphis, Tennessee at the time, and I went to places where my family was to see if I could like move out of Memphis, um, which was a tricky place to be me, um, and. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. So I, I moved I moved away to Colorado, actually. I ended up trying a few different places, but I ended up moving to Colorado and uh, working for a college there. And um, I actually, before I left Memphis, I met, like, you know, the love of my life. I got lucky. I met someone, in, um, and six months after that, I moved to Colorado and convinced her to move with me, which was pretty amazing. And... Um, and, but this was like a big step up. It was like I got to work in computers, and this was like the first time that I got to work on the things that I like kind of imagined, you know, when I was like working on Linux and everything else. And, um, and it was a really good experience moving to Colorado. It's one of the few places that I would move away here, you know, to move back to if possible. But, um, but you know, opportunity came knocking. I got super, super lucky. And, um, Anyway, so I move out here for that other big company. I, uh, I had a really good time. It was my dream. Like, I moved out here, and, um, you know, it, like, it was everything that was my dream. Like, I came out here, and it was like there were nerds everywhere. Like, like I couldn't walk outside without tripping over three of them. <laughs> and... Um, that was different for me. Like, it wasn't that I didn't find people that were, like, in my community, but I had to go out and seek them out in other places, whereas I felt like here, like, I felt like I had really come home. You know, it was, like, the place that I wanted to be. It was the place that I wanted to spend uh, that time. And I really enjoyed my work and my coworkers. Um, I was intimidated by the level of expertise that the place where I worked especially, but also just everyone in general out here. Like... I remember coming out here and seeing like all these companies that like I knew from like the little cards that I had put in my computer, but like they have offices, like that's weird, right? Like, I mean, for anyone who's moved from out of the area here, I think, it, like it's hard to describe if, if you grew up, maybe if you grew up here, it's not like that, but for me it was amazing. It's like there's all these companies that I had heard of and it was really cool. And, um, and while I was there, I started a family and my, son was born, and that was back in, like, 2008. And, you know, things were going okay, and then I got fired. And um, it was not awesome. Um, there were lots of things about it that were not super great. Like, you know, I was, my son had recently been born. I actually didn't get to take all my family leave. Um, like, it, it changed me in so many ways. Like, this was like my dream job, like the kind of thing that I wanted to do. I loved the work that I was doing. And all of a sudden, it was just like, 
like, who am I? Like, I am, am I even, like, I worked so hard to do this, and now they're saying that I'm not worth it. Like, you know, um, this is probably the hardest part to say anything about, but, like, like it questioned my very self-worth. I was super depressed, and, you know, I, um, it was just hard. If you've ever been through anything like this, and, and I'm sure that there are other personal struggles that people have had that are like this, but like it's super hard to kind of like pick yourself and move on because like for me it was like this this was like this was what I wanted to do ever since I was a kid, ever since I was like 12, you know, when I got my first computer, and um, not necessarily that particular company, but just like the idea that like this company that I super respected, and now, you know, there was that. Um, but after that all happened, I mean, I, you know, I certainly started, um, so I got, like, scared of big companies. Like, I thought that every big company with really smart people was going to be like this. And I don't think that it's necessarily even the company. I think it's the team that I was on in a lot of ways. And, uh, but I started kind of making these small decisions. And these small decisions led to, like, small victories, right? Like, so, you know, the next job that I got, well, the next job that I got, I actually learned other interesting things as well. So like every job that I've had between there and here where I am today has taught me something. You know, the thing at that big company taught me that, you know, loyalty may not need to, may, maybe I don't need loyalty to a company. Like it's nice to work for a nice company and it's like good, but a company owes me as much as I owe them. And um, like I was, I was, you know, imposter syndrome and everything else. Like, I didn't feel like that before that. And after that, I just started to realize that, you know, maybe there's a lot more to, you know, there's a lot more things that I needed to do to kind of, like, move on and, and just be more confident. Because, like, before that, like, I loved computers and I was good at them, but, like, I wasn't, like, super confident in my ability to, like, kind of influence people and, like, get things done. Um, so anyway, after, after that, I uh, started working for startups. And I worked for a lot of startups. I worked for about three years at that first company out here. And then, um, and I, I've actually never had a job that's longer than three years in one month. So, like, so I went through a lot of companies in the intervening time because I was like looking for something that was interesting. I went through a number of startups. Um, I learned a lot of, like I said, I learned a lot of lessons during this time. Like each of the different companies like taught me a different thing about myself or about like how to handle situations, which is like, you know, some of them were good things, some of them were bad things, but like they all ultimately made, you know, me who I am. And uh, like over that time, you know, things like, like I kind of crawled out of the thing, you know, I mean, it's been many years. We're talking like 2010 to now, right? 2010 to roughly 2016 is the time period that I, you know, worked at startups, and none of them were particularly well known. Um, it was interesting. Uh, the work was interesting. The people were interesting, but um, but it got to a point where, like, being kind of the only. So as a as a DevOps person, I mean, I was you know doing like SRE type work and. Being the main person at these companies doing that, um, and especially at really small startups, you end up being kind of the only person. Like, that got kind of lonely for me, like, just professionally, you know, because, you know, I'm very much the type of person who likes to collaborate. And, um, you know, I think that Jennifer mentioned this in her talk, but I've, I've never taken that test, but I looked at her little results about how she's, like, strongly collaborative and stuff like that. And when she was talking about, that it, it kind of resonates with me because I really like working with people. I love teaching people. I love, you know, finding ways to like help people be better at what they do. Kind of teach them all these things and like and like maybe even just be that conduit for learning. Maybe I'm not actually teaching them the thing, but I'm helping them like find the way to get there, right? And so I decided at the end of about 20, I guess it was it was 2015, 2016. I don't remember exactly. I decided to try another big company. But I picked a big company that wasn't like as intimidating to me <laughs> because like I was still scared. Like, I mean, I, I was a lot more confident than I used to be, but like I, you know, I wanted to, 
I guess kind of dipped my toe back in, but I was also kind of tired of like startups and being that lonely feeling. And I wanted to try to find a place that I could like find a team to work with. And I found a place and they, you know, liked me and they seemed pretty good. So I started there and, um, and it was better in some ways for sure. Like there were definite advantages to like having more than one of, you know, SM, more, more than one SRE running around. And I was able to, you know, kind of like, if nothing else, find people that I could complain about the same problems. And when I complained to them, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, that thing. <laughs> and they wouldn't be like, that doesn't sound like a problem. Why did it take you six months to do this, you know? So like, so like, you know, so I, so I took that in and, you know, the company that I was at, like it had its fair share of issues. Um, I, again, switched jobs to another, but like another company that I, um, respected a lot more in a lot of ways. Um, and like, that's actually, I guess I should have changed my slides at some point. Um, I have pictures because like, I mean, it's like a story, right? So, um, but as I was working, like as I started thinking about new companies, actually at the end of that previous company, so you can, it's probably, pretty obvious that I'm trans. Um, if it's not, I am. Ha, huh, surprise. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I had kind of come to that realization during this time frame. Like, I was still at the other company. The company actually had a very good culture for this. Um, they were very accepting. They, you know, there, were, there, there was nothing that I felt like limited by doing that. Um, I started telling my family, you know, like my personal, you know, like, my partner, my, you know, mom, dad, sister. Um, some of that went better than others. My partner has been amazing. Uh, my mom has been relatively supportive. Other parts of my family are a little tricky. My partner's family has been amazing, though. Like, if it weren't for them, I, I wouldn't be where I am right now, standing in front of you. Um, and I decided to transition at that time. And, like, part of, like, you know, like I'm, you know, pursuing these more interesting opportunities, like finding more interesting things to look at. And, um, and that was when I went to that last company that I talked about. And um, when I started working there, like when I signed on, like, like I was very skeptical about this company because I, I, I went and, um, you know, and I talked to, you know, I, I met them at a conference and then I talked to some of their people and they seemed really nerdy and that was like really super fun because like, I'm a nerd. And um, I mean like anything, like if you're a nerd about taxes, I would be interested, right? Okay, so, so like, yeah, um, anyway, so, so I, I go working at this new company and like and, you know and I get the paperwork for orientation and stuff and I remember there was this like one like statement about like how they um, it was the dress code thing and it was like they it was like dress code and it was like we want you to bring your full and authentic self to work uh, wear whatever makes you feel comfortable and like I've kind of embraced that since starting there and. I've done that every day and like my job also ended up being something that was a lot bigger than a lot of my other jobs had been in terms of like working with people and everything else. And I've managed to like kind of like, you know, do this thing where I'm, I feel like I'm much more effective in a lot of ways. I'm doing things that I love, you know, like working with people, like getting them to do my bidding. But, um, or it's influencing, that's what Sarah said, right? <laughs> and <laughs> and um, I, you know, I, I've had a really good time. I've worked with lots of really smart people and I've gotten to do things that, you know, I frankly never thought that I would get to do again after that experience at that first big company. And um, it's, it's been amazing. And like one of the parts of my job has been literally going around to people and telling them like that they are more amazing than they ever thought that they could be. And like, you know, actually like helping people. And that's, and that's where the thing comes from, that you're amazing, more amazing than you can think. And like, 
And so like there were a few things that I learned during all of this process and I'm just gonna kind of blow through these. Um, but so being aware of what's going on is like super critical. Like for me, like that, that's kind of like a lot of my growth has been around like just kind of like being self-aware and also being situationally aware and just like seeing what's going around, you know, going on around me and like kind of figuring out how to react to it. And like people matter so much more than you think. Like, um, yeah, I mean, there's just like, I don't know where I am in terms of time. Um, so that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm, I lost my timer. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, people matter more than you think. So if you're one of those people who, like I was earlier in my career, where you're like, you know, kind of like, I love the technology, I love what I'm working on, but you're kind of like neglecting the kind of people side of things, I would encourage you to rethink that strategy. Um, especially when you get further on in your career, I think it's really important to be able to do, to work with people to do those things. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, small and big companies have advantages. I, I enjoyed my time at the startups, but I enjoyed my time at big companies for different reasons, so try them both. And, uh, you know, transitioning like working is all about making a bunch of small practical decisions and having those small practical victories. And like at my new job, sometimes a new approach is, is super useful. You know, it's very, it a very different job. Actually, it was more different than I realized when I signed on, and it's been so good. And like self and self care is not mutually exclusive with success. And I like, and that was something that I've come, you know, when I was getting fired, I thought I could work harder. Now I know that that's not necessarily the only thing that's a, that's happening. So, um, and really, I mean, it's like I said, it's a more personal story than like anything, and. You know, this has to do with like, you know, navigating changes of careers, navigating changes of life and everything else and uh, bridging the gap, right? Thank you, Jennifer, for doing all this. Um, and for me, and for me, it's been personal and professional. And this is, this is my family. You may have seen them running around earlier. Um, yeah, and go to that website. It's really simple and stupid. I set it up because I thought it, because it was available and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe that's still available. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's, that, that's really it for the talk. I do want to, I do want to say one more thing though, and I know that Connie Lynn already gave a lot of people thanks. I want to actually say it all again, because like this conference couldn't have helped, happened without a ton of people, so I want to like say from all of the Silicon Valley 2008 organizers. Thank you, everyone. Connie Lynn, our MC. <laughs> our volunteers that helped us out, the other organizers, Jennifer and Peter. Um, we had a number of people just kind of like, you know, step up to help in like small ways. We had people that were officially, uh, you guys should come up here, you know? Like you and Peter, come on. You know, we have everyone who gave talks. Connie, no. No. <laughs> okay. She's like, I'm tired of being up on stage. <laughs> Fine, there she is. Um, volunteers, the talk speakers, like everyone who gave a talk. I, you know, I went around to a number of these talks, and um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to see a ton of talks when you're on, uh, when you're doing this, but like. There were some that stuck with me, like, thank you all for being a participator. <laughs> thank you, David, wherever you are. Um, Katie, trying to apply DevOps to smaller, you know, to smaller situations. That's really hard. Finding the, like, when you're going from A to B, trying to find that line between the two is extremely hard. And that's what her talk was all about to me. And that's what a lot of my career growth has been, has been figuring that process out. And like Sarah with her, I'm gonna use the word influence so much now because of her. <laughs> because it's better than manipulate. <laughs> and um, of course the Ignite speakers, I, you know, David was one of the Ignite speakers, but there were a lot of other good Ignite, great Ignite speakers that were 
up here. Um, we had the open space participants and leaders, like those people just really stepped up and kind of made some of these conversations happen. I really appreciate that because I'm a terrible open space like <laughs> organizer. Um, and uh, I think that Connie did a really good job yesterday with that too. Connie Lynn, Connie Lynn sorry. Connie Lynn, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm terrible. And, uh, but that's not the only people, like all of our attendees, all of you and everyone else, right? Like, you're both spectators and participators. <laughs> but not agitators, I would not appreciate that. <laughs> and, um, and we also have the, you know, thank you to the sponsors for, you know, coming out and like showing off their products and also like, you know, sponsoring and making this possible for all of us. And also, <laughs> and I also wanna recognize the event staff because like there's a lot of people that kind of worked behind the scenes that were kind of like hired hands that like we couldn't have done this without. So the caterers, AV folks like Albert and I am so terrible. Chris in the back doing video. Uh, there were other people at the Computer History Museum that helped us and like the captioners on the other end are amazing and like they were so much fun to set up the captioning with. They like, didn't get nachos. They didn't get nachos, but you know what they did? They managed to like, they, so when I was setting up the, the captioning today, they managed to caption beatboxing and like really, really <laughs> terrible beatboxing. So, ns, ns, ns. yeah, so and that's really all I have to say. I just want to say thank you, everyone. This is the first conference that I ever organized and it's been a really great experience and I really appreciate just everyone for being here. <laughs>